today on how to drink, I'm going to go down to Friday's. I'm going to get two drinks. I'm going to eat a lot of weird food. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to look at those drinks. I'm going to see if I can make like a better version of them. See if they're any good. We'll find out. Because a lot of these places, they make weird drinks. Let's go! Meredith, let's go get lunch. We tried out Applebee's now, thank God it's Friday's. Woo! Friday's is a very 80s place, right? It just screams like suspenders and rolled up sleeves and like Wall Street. That's what I think of, like the movie Cocktail. He works at a Friday's at one point. All right, so we went to Friday's and we went with a couple of coolers. Yeti, who's not Yeti, a sponsor of this show. <laughs> and so I got a drink. What did I get? I got a, a strawberry henny. And the only reason I got the strawberry henny was because the peanut butter white Russian, they were all out. So we'll have to do another episode on Fridays. Believe me, if this works, these episodes, we could do them a lot because they have some crazy ass drinks over there. And now we're going to try it out and see if it's any good for you. Just like we're at Friday's, when he initially served it, it did look like it had something like this. So this is close enough. And we never got a release from that guy, but our waiter was great. That guy was awesome. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. Strawberry Henny. Oh boy. That, mm, you little boy. It's weird. It kind of reminds me of like an Arnold Palmer. It's very sweet. It's very strawberry. Beyond that, it really kind of just tastes like like you've combined lemonade and iced tea in proportions such that it tastes like lemonade with all of its character stripped out of it like it's not really tart it's not really sweet it's like the lemon the lemonade component that i'm picking up on here and also like that the iced tea is like really just watered down it doesn't really have like a strong iced tea vibe going on it just kind of like ugh. It's, it's a bad arnold palmer it's kind of what it, it vibes like i think lime juice must be a component because there's a, a lime in here and i do know from our waiter that they do have to pulverize the strawberries every day. That's real at Fridays. I assumed it just came out of like a plastic bag of like goop or something like that. And that he, he was commenting that, you know, these strawberries are too sweet. Some strawberries are sweeter than others. So that's good to know, actually. He was a discerning gentleman. Um, Mary, do you have the recipe, the actual, what it says in the, put it up on screen, of uh, course. All it says is Hennessy, Grand Marnier, and strawberry. Tennessee, Grand Marnier, and Strawberry. Well, they're leaving out a few things there. So here's my thinking, right? This big, you know, like soda shop fountain, soda fountain drink, right? Which is what this is, this huge long drink. What they've done is they made a strawberry lemonade iced tea kind of thing. And then they threw some cognac in there some to jack it up a little bit. If I was gonna go long drink route with this, I wanna make it like a fizz, probably. I think that could be interesting. But I also think that this combination of ingredients, if you're going strawberry, cognac, Grand Marnier, it makes for a better sour. All right, so let's start with a shaker. We're gonna shake this drink. I'm gonna do this like as a cobbler, I think. I have strawberries. I'm just gonna take a couple of strawberries, particularly the ones that wouldn't make for a very nice garnish. And I'm going to take the tops off. And we're just gonna make some strawberry slices. I'm just gonna throw these straight into the shaker. Big juicy fruits like these, you throw them in a shaker with some heavy dense ice and you, you pound them around. They will become pulverized. They will give up all of their juice and flavor. They will incorporate really well. All right, so I got three strawberries in there. I didn't use a scale or anything like that, but you can see what kind of size strawberries we were using. We're gonna start light. I'm gonna go with a half an ounce simple syrup, which I think is probably the right amount. It's not even, I'm gonna say that's not light. I think that's right about, this is the worst bottle I could have put this stuff into, but I was desperate. Again, I, I don't know if I ex explained this premise. There's no recipe here. By the way, just so that uh, I, I should say this in every episode, because this seems to be of a lot of interest to people. No recipe. I have a drink. I'm trying to make him riff on it. That's really it. I'm winging it. So fresh strawberries um, and a half an ounce of simple syrup. I think some lime juice would be okay here. We're going to get a half an ounce of lime juice. I really hope I didn't just overdo it, but I'm making bold choices. Might have been too much, but we'll find out. Orange liqueur. Yeah, why not? Orange liqueur. The Grand Marnier, just keeping with it. You know, I get such a strong chocolate note on the nose of this. I'm going to say it right here. I think this drink would work without it, but I am going to put it in there. I'm going to do three quarters of an ounce of Grand Marnier. Grand Marnier is pretty similar to dry curacao, honestly. And dry curacao would work fine. 
And then we're gonna do two ounce pour of our Hennessy. All right, so I've got two ounces of cognac in here. And I honestly, I think this is gonna be pretty good. You know what, it might actually wind up being that it needs more lemon, or uh, it might need more lime juice, we'll find out. Let's shake this sucker up, I mean, that's really it. One big piece of ice. Do -do -do -do. Here we go. I'm going to do kind of a half gated pour. There's like just one big chunk of ice in there that I don't want to have in my drink, but everything else is fine. And that's uh, my riff on this. It's a lot less pink, but that's okay. It's probably a lot more cognac by ratio, right? It's not really a sour, it's kind of more of a cobbler. Let's see how it came out. Holy shit, it's so good. It's one of the best, oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I genuinely am very happy with myself. I love this drink. <laughs> um, whew, it tastes like fresh strawberries in the best possible way. What a harmonious drink. I can't, yeah, nailed it. So this drink balances. You don't taste lime juice. It is not overly sour in any way. It is not overly sweet in any way. Both of those ingredients, those tiny little touches, that little push of sweet, that little tap of sour. I just guessed and I got it right. I'm so happy with myself. And I, I am, I'm very happy with myself. <laughs> it just happens that it, 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 I got it right this time. Um, and it was the right amount of strawberries because it would be, I mean, you could put more strawberries in here. I think in fact, you could put as many as you want. You can safely increase your strawberries here to your heart's content, but this is fine. You could serve this at brunch. People would like this. It's a little spirit forward. It's like right on the edge of too spirity for a brunch drink, but some people want that first off. <laughs> and secondly, it is just on the edge. Any more than this and it would be too boozy for the fruit cobbler kind of cocktail that it is. Um, and frankly, if you wanted one that was just a touch less boozy, go to an ounce and a half of the cognac and you're there. Um, the cognac is present. It's present without being huge. It is this really mellow, um, dark chocolate, sweet raisins kind of vibe uh, that runs right under the bottom of this drink, gives it great like base flavors, right? Cause you got strawberries that are kind of your treble flavors. There's a full orchestra here. Fresh mint here would knock this out of the park. You throw a sprig of fresh mint here. So you're getting a whiff of mint while you drink this. Oh my God, this would be so good. Really brunchy then. Garnish this with strawberry, garnish this with, uh, maybe strawberry, it's overdone at this point, raspberries. You know, raspberries or something on a, on a skewer or some blackberries for color. I do think that the green mint would go well, especially with it kind of then presenting like a strawberry with the top. I mean, I think I, this is perfect. This is a perfect version of this. I'm sorry, I, I feel like that's a very big headed thing to say, but it's great when I blind make a drink and I just, it comes out of the shaker just the way I hope it will be. Yeah, yeah, by comparison, this tastes a little fake and very flat flavor wise, very, very muted. This is way less diluted, it's a shorter drink. Um, so there's a lot more compact, compressed, you know, like much more concentrated flavors. If you can make that prettier, I swear that would have, you could serve that in any fancy pants brunch spot or like upscale cocktail bar. By the way, I think you could swab, swab, <laughs> sub swap. I think you could swap this cognac for gin, for whiskey, for vodka. All of those would work fine. What I'm wondering is how many strawberry hennies does Fridays sell? I maintain that you under, you, you way overestimate people's like, pellets for drinking alcohol. I just, are people who go to, I, this is what I want to know. I mean, tell me in the comments, are you, are you going to Fridays and ordering the Friday signature cocktails? Or if you're having a drink, is it like a neat pour or like a standard cocktail or a beer? That's what I'm wondering. If this is the right drink to serve in a Fridays and this is kind of not, and it wouldn't really work there because it is, it's a, it's a, it's a cocktail. I mean, that's a real cocktail. It's like a loud brash cocktail. It's balanced, it's, it's intention, it works really well, I think. But I mean, you have to like a cocktail. <laughs> if you don't, it's not gonna necessarily be for everybody. Um, so I just, I wonder about that. It's an interesting question. Well, frankly, I'm tickled pink with my performance on this one. Right after this though, we're gonna move on to the next drink from Friday's, the Cotton Candy Cosmo. All right, here we go. This is the Cotton Candy Cosmo. Uh, so we have a little glass here and um, we had them give us some of the cotton candy to go. Our waiter was very accommodating. It was nice of him. 
So this is what you do. You take some of this cotton candy, you put it in there. Man, I haven't smelled cotton candy in a while. Oh my God, it's very intense. Extreme carnival vibes, obviously. And uh, you open up this guy and we pour this over the cotton candy. And immediately the cotton candy melts. And there we have our cotton candy Cosmo. That's about half as uh, the size as it would have been at Applebee's. We poured it small so that we'd have more for the close up. I mean, it's a lot of pineapple. It smells like pineapple. It tastes like pineapple. I don't think it's cranberry at all. I would say that this is a Cosmo in name only in that it's pink. I think the cranberry juice is basically there to make it pink. Uh, what, what else does the menu say it's got in it? Sky vodka, cranberry, pineapple, poured over cotton candy. I'm in a tough spot here because this drink, the name of the drink is it's a cotton candy Cosmo. I'm somewhat intrigued by that idea. I don't know if I, if it's a great drink, but it's an interesting notion. But this doesn't taste anything like a cotton candy Cosmo. It does have cotton candy and it is a cool presentation with melting the cotton candy and it, it provides sweetness, but it doesn't taste like cotton candy. And it doesn't taste like a Cosmo. It tastes like, like a vodka pineapple. That's really what it tastes like, that's it. And so that's a different drink. Like, do I make a, a pineapple vodka drink or do I make a cotton candy Cosmo? Um, there's no rules here, honestly. Um, I think that the rule should be we do the most interesting thing we can do at any given step. I think the most interesting thing we can do is make a cotton candy Cosmo. I think that this is a bad representation of a drink that would be called a cotton candy Cosmo. So maybe let's get the cotton candy machine in here. All right, I'm back. I got my cotton candy machine. Why do I have a cotton candy machine? That's a weird thing to have. I have it because of the drink we did, the Sierra Madre, the Sierra Madre Martini from Fallout. So I've already heated this up. It's hot. It's ready to make cotton candy. I only have two colors of floss sugar. I have green and I have orange. We're going with orange. Cotton candy is weird. I don't, I don't understand what's happening <laughs> with cotton candy. I don't particularly think that cotton candy is very flavored. We'll find out. I think it mostly is just colored sugar. Let's just taste it real quick to see what this cotton candy tastes like. Yeah, it tastes like cotton candy. It doesn't taste like orange or anything like that. So I think we're all right. So first thing I'm going to do is I have my glass. My glass is ready. The next thing I want to do is shake this drink. I'm going to build this drink right now. And remember, I'm not really worried about the way that thing tasted. I want to make a good version of a cotton candy Cosmo because I think it's an amusing idea. What I'm thinking is here's the deal. You have an idea in your head of what cotton candy tastes like. In a cocktail, it doesn't. Additionally, those flavors are a bit at odds on the face of it with what's going on in a Cosmo. Cosmo is cranberry juice, uh, citron, vodka typically, um, triple sec, and um, a tiny amount of lime juice, and a flamed orange peel. This drink from Friday's calls for Sky Vodka. This is not a Citron vodka, and maybe it is Sky Citron, but their menu just says Sky Vodka. I bet it's not. It should be a orange vodka, right? A cotton candy Cosmo might taste an awful lot like an orange Julius or lemon whip. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for here. So instead of using an ounce and a half of Citron, we're gonna split that. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of absolute Citron. And this could bust. This could be a terrible idea. Three quarters of an ounce of Pinnacle Whipped. I'm building a little out of order here. Let's just keep going with this. We're gonna do half an ounce of Cointreau. Totally backwards build. So there's this idea in cocktail mixology that you should build drinks with your cheapest ingredient to your most expensive. When I'm designing a cocktail, sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. A lot of times it's about getting those base spirits right first and then kind of working, balancing them. It's just, you know, whatever which direction my brain wants to do the math in, I don't really fight it. I'm not gonna worry about that. Now, if this is a recipe that I know works and we're serving it to people in a bar, especially it's important to build that way because if you make a mistake, you don't waste your expensive ingredients. In this case, there's a really good chance it's gonna be a mistake no matter what I do. So, it doesn't matter. Uh, the typical Cosmo calls for a quarter ounce of lime juice. Yeah, I think I'll stick with a quarter ounce here. Uh, you know, there's a part of me that's like, maybe we should bump it up to a half, but we don't want this to taste like lime. We're just trying to make sure that we balance the sweetness. It might need a little bit more because we will be adding sweetness, but we'll see. Let's get to this. Let's make the drink first. Um, and now an ounce of cranberry juice, typically an ounce of cranberry juice, because this is ocean spray, 100% juice. Cranberry juice blend. They add other fruit juices that are sweeter there. If you ever get fresh juiced cranberry, it's intense. It's like really kind of honestly hard to drink. But th you know, this, this is what a Cosmo calls for though, this kind of cranberry juice, not health food store crazy cranberry juice. So that's 
our drink. I'm not gonna sweeten this here. We're gonna let the cotton candy sweeten it. We're gonna add ice and shake. One big ice. Before I shake this up, I might prep my glass. So let's sit, let that sit. I've got these tiny clips, right? Here's what I wanna do. And yeah, this glass should be chilled, probably. Now, what I wanna do is, instead of just putting this in the drink, I want it to be like a cloud off to the side of the drink like that, which is super haute couture and, and artsy fartsy looking. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna strain this into our cocktail glass. Uh, get a good orange. Pull a goodly twist from it. All right, here we are. This is my cotton candy Cosmo that I would have made, I think. Hang on, I'm interested now. I wanna trace this because one, an okay drink, two. Well, I mean, my God, it's a better drink. There's no question. This really tastes like a Cosmo with this hint of vanilla, this cotton candy flavor. It's not very, very sweet. Although my cotton candy sugar might be sitting on the bottom, so let's mix it in now. Uh, it's not very, very sweet, or it wasn't, let me see. But it's very, very drinkable. It tastes like a Cosmo with a creamy, orangey, vanilla-y thing going on. Is it a perfect representation of what your mind might imagine when you can try to put together the crazy idea of a cotton candy Cosmo? I think there's some room for improvement. I don't think it's a bad first go. I think it's really good. I think that I would be really curious to know what you guys do to embellish this. I, that's my challenge to you. Try to make this drink. I'm gonna see what you guys come up with. I would encourage you to think in terms of like, try to not make it too sweet. You know, don't just add a lot of syrups and liqueurs to it. I would say that probably everything you need to make the string work is already here, but maybe probably the proportions are out. I think I just want it to be sweeter. I think that all I want is like a a little more sweetness in this. I think that I thought I was gonna get more sweetness from the cotton candy than I did. So maybe we put a bar spoon of sweetness in this. Now I wanna say that this is an appropriate amount of sweetness for a Cosmo. Cosmos are pretty tart and dry drinks, but for a cotton candy Cosmo, for that I want it to be just a touch sweeter, not crazy, a bar spoon, and I mean not even a fat bar spoon, but like, like that. Because what happens is late in this flavor profile, a pretty astringent lemon note is showing up, but it's lemon like without sweetness. So it's not like, oh, like a lemon drop, a lemon candy, a lemonade. It's like mm, biting a lemon. And maybe you do want that. I think certainly in a Cosmo proper, you do want that. In a cotton candy Cosmo. In a cotton candy Cosmo, I ask you. I ask you, is that what you want? I don't know. That brought it together for me. No, just a bar spoon. I would just add a bar spoon of simple to this recipe. It just helps it. It rounded off this very late arriving, super tart note that I, like I said, I want from a normal Cosmo, but it's something called a cotton candy Cosmo I don't want. So I guess we win. I guess we made a better cotton candy Cosmo. I'm happy about it. I don't look happy about it. I've had a long day, but I, I'm happy about it. So we've been to Applebee's, we've been to Friday's, and to be perfectly honest, we could just keep going to Applebee's and Friday's because they keep putting out these crazy ass drinks uh, on like a monthly basis. But what's up next? I don't know. Probably Cheesecake Factory. Probably Buffalo Wild Wings. Talk about Chili's Baby Back Ribs. How about Outback? You're on mic. You don't have to whisper. You could well, have I just said. I wanted to give you the. Uh, you're but out the of I, I wasn't. The, I'd already lost the moment. It's fine. You can interject. What else is there? What else? I mean, Hooli Hands. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, listen, I don't care if you subscribe or not. That's fine. That sounds fake if I say it like that. So subscribe, don't subscribe, whatever. But do watch. Always be watching, always watching Wazowski. And uh, I will see you soon with another episode of HTD. And I've made so many episodes of HTD because I've been making this show for six years, like a stupid human inebriated meat puppet who cavorts for your entertainment back and forth here behind my bar. And if you have missed any of those episodes, which you may enjoy since you seem to be enjoying this enough to stay all the way to the end, like about 60% of my audience, you might enjoy some of these others, but only two and a half percent of my audience clicks on any of these videos. So you out there be one of the two and a half percent who clicks on one of the four videos now on your screen. And I will see you soon with another episode of HTD. I haven't signed off that way in a while.